Hey kids, welcome back to Ruptured Hotspots and welcome to a new Songs of Six video. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different this time. I am going to try and answer one of the most common questions I see with new players uh, on Discord and on Reddit, and that is, what is the best way to feed your population? So what I've done is uh, a surprisingly huge amount of work in Excel to figure out what the best foods are for different races and different climates and stuff like that. And I think I've got some pretty good answers for you. I'm going to show you a little bit about how I made these calculations in Excel. For those of you that are not interested in math, I will put timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead to the results. We're going to start by looking at a few of the assumptions that I'm making when I do the statistics here. So basically, there's a huge amount of modifiers that affect the productivity of a workplace in Songs of Six. And I have basically eliminated all of those that I think are not particularly relevant to this or that make comparison kind of difficult. So uh, I'm going to be assuming, for example, that you have enough janitors and that your buildings are not degrading. Any buildings you've you've built are 100% efficient, so they're not missing auxiliaries. Uh, I'm going to assume that you're not using any overtime. Uh, in terms of the workloads, I'm going to assume that the workplaces are operating at 100%. You're going to be typically averaging more like maybe 80 to 90%, but I will, for the sake of just keeping everything comparable, assume that the workload of all these workplaces is 100%. Keep in mind that uh, pay attention to the workload of your building. So the workload is going to have a huge effect if you don't, if you aren't close to 100%, it will have a huge effect on the actual yield of your buildings. I'm going to assume that there are no uh, positive or negative events like strikes, droughts, uh, the various uh, diseases for the livestock and stuff like that. So obviously we're just assuming that everything's operating normally. I'm also going to assume that you have not invested in education, uh, religion, tools, nobility, experience, titles. Uh, these are all things that can increase the yields of various buildings. It may actually be worth investing in some of these to increase the yields of some of the less efficient buildings. I've done all the calculations with no technology and no upgrades. I am going to make some suggestions as to which upgrades are the most efficient and are likely to change the outcome of these calculations. Uh, there are a few workplace specific modifiers uh, that I, I need to go through here. So we're going to assume that if you're using pastures, you are using them with 100% capacity in terms of animals. So you're not short on workers, you're not short on animals, basically. Pastures also get a bonus from fresh water. This is an interesting thing to note, by the way. This is a really good tip. You do not need to cover the entire pasture with water. It just needs to be touching the water. Basically, the animals need access to water and you get a flat 25% bonus. So I'm going to assume that you are taking advantage of that bonus. Fisheries in ocean tiles get a 20% bonus. It's called the deep sea bonus. So I'm going to assume that you're only building fisheries in ocean tiles. Lake or river fisheries are much less worthwhile than ocean fisheries. Just keep that in mind. For farms, I'm going to assume that the f average fertility of your farm is 90%. Uh, you may end up in tiles where you're not able to get more than about 80% uh, without doing something like irrigation. I'm going to be kind of assuming that you're not using irrigation. So if you want to get 90% fertility, you are best to be in a relatively fertile tile and you're building near rivers. So keep in mind that if you're not in a fertile tile, some of the performance of the farms on this list are just not going to do as well as they look uh, in the stats here. For orchards, it's going to be the same as farms, 90% fertility. We're also going to assume that all of your orchard's trees are are fully grown and bearing fruit. This is actually a pretty big assumption. Uh, trees take, I don't know, what is it, 60 days or something to grow? So it takes a long time to get orchards online. Orchards are very powerful, but it takes them a long time to grow. When we look at bakeries, we're going to we're gonna be looking at both wood-fired bakeries and coal-fired bakeries. Generally speaking, if you're using a coal mine to provide your bakeries with coal, you're going to only do that if you're in a tile that has a bonus to the coal mine. And the output on those tiles is rarely close to 100%. It's actually mostly closer to like 50 or 60%. So I'm going to just assume that the output of the coal mine is 65%. And I think that's actually a little bit generous for a lot of maps. So you can take a look at the approximate formulas that I'm using to calculate these things. Uh, I've taken out a lot of variables that, that are just going to be assumed to be normal. So for the primary resources, that's excluding bakeries and charcoalers and things like that that require inputs. What I've done here is I've put in every workplace type that produces food or is related to producing food, like say woodcutters and farms. And I have I've modified the base value by the species value and any miscellaneous modifiers. For example, uh, you've got, you know, the deep sea modifier for fisheries here. Uh, things change a little bit when you start looking at bakeries because you can't get you can't simply calculate the labor cost of a bakery in the same way as you would for, say, a woodcutter or a grain farm. Uh, you, you have to take into account the labor that's producing the bread as well as the labor that's producing the wood and the grain that are 
needed to create the bread. So this table is a little bit more complicated. You can see here I've got input one and input two, and I need to get the uh, workers per unit of each of these so that I can multiply that. So if we go back to the primary here, you can see for um, woodcutters, the workers per unit is 0.25. I bring that over here. So the formula for a bakery ends up being one baker plus one wood times 0.25 workers, six grain times 0.16 workers per grain, which is divided by the base output and, and multiplied by the species modifier. So this is a little bit more of a complex formula, but what it's giving you is the total units per worker, taking into consideration the fact that the wood needs to be chopped for the bakery and the grain needs to be harvested as well. So now that I've explained all the calculations, you, you can see the results. So there's all these different combinations. Like there's uh, 109 different co uh, combinations I had to calculate for, uh, and it has to do with what the building is, what the climate is, what the species is, and all the modifiers we talked about. So everything now is able, able to be sorted. These are all of the uh, food producing buildings sorted by units per worker. I've also included the reverse, which is workers per unit. That's that's a number that I use in doing the math here, which is just sort of the opposite of units per worker. Uh, part of the cool thing about this number is that if you divide it by two, you actually get the minimum percentage of population that you need to, to provide food for your entire population. People in Songs of Six eat one food every two days, as far as I can tell. So we're able to derive the minimum percent of population from the workers per unit. Keep in mind that this minimum percent of population does not account for spoilage and transportation so you're likely going to need more more than this percentage of your population to actually feed it but this is the minimum so looking at the results here we can see that uh, hunters are the clear winner especially in cold climates and for every race with the exception of orchards for cretonians problem with hunters though is that they they hit a cap at 15 hunters once you have 15 hunters total in your city the amount of food that they are able to produce starts to decline the amount of food per hunter starts to decline and it declines quite quickly you can counteract this by researching by researching this technology you can see it's very very cheap it's only 50 so you could add say 50 percent you could research this five times and add say 50 percent uh, hunting skill but all that's going to do is prolong the time during which you can use hunters to provide your city with food so uh, as as it stands right now you're probably going to have to start transitioning off of hunters in most circumstances around 100 population if you research higher productivity for hunters you might be able to prolong that uh if you're you're playing as tilapies you might be able to prolong that if you're in a cold climate you might be able to prolong that it's inevitable you're going to have to transition from hunters at, at some point so what food source do we want to transition to so i've got this table here that shows you the best food sources once i've removed the hunters and you can see that uh, orchards are among the most productive mushroom farms do very well in cold climates and bakeries are definitely high on the list for a lot of races in a lot of climates let's look at the specific situation for each race though because it's quite likely that you're going to use your starting race to produce the bulk of your food in the in the early and mid game. So let's start with Cretonians. Uh, Cretonians are obviously the best food producers in the game. Uh, in, in these tables here, I've highlighted in green the foods that Cretonians like to eat and the production costs in the climates they like to live in. So you see here that orchards, and this is going to be a trend across the board here, orchards are the clear w winner in terms of raw productivity. There's a big however with orchards, and that is you need to be mindful of disease. The disease event with orchards is probably the worst of all of the kind of climates and disease events that can hit your city. Uh, it kills a bunch of the trees, and those trees take many, many days to grow back. Definitely be mindful of disease. It's probably not the best idea to rely exclusively on orchards for food and if you do rely on orchards for food you should probably make sure that you have more orchards more orchards than you actually need so bakeries fruit farms and vegetable farms also very good bets for cretonians in fact the difference between orchards and fruit farms is small enough that it might even be better to just stick with farms for fruit and vegetables as cretonians as you upgrade your bakeries one of the things that's um going to make bakeries very strong even for cretonians is this upgrade tech here it only costs 250 science you just need to get your hands on a little bit of metal which you can either buy or you can take another tech over here and produce these two techs together are quite cheap uh, that's going to increase your bakeries by 50 percent so it's going to make bakeries better than most food sources in many circumstances and if you compare that to the upgrades that you would need here these are actually quite cheap they've become a lot cheaper but to put five levels to get the equivalent of 
of uh, the bakery upgrade, you're going to need to put about four or five levels of edible crop optimization, and that's going to probably cost you a little bit more tech than this one here. So that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, in terms of in terms of which fuel source you should use for the bakeries, I've done the calculations. Uh, in most circumstances, if you don't have an upgraded mine, an upgraded coal mine that's quite efficient, it's probably you're probably better off going with wood. Uh, however, there's circumstances where you might end up buying coal. You might end up with a very efficient coal mine or a heavily upgraded coal mine, in which case coal would be a better bet. But it's basically a toss up. I don't really see using a charcoaler to create coal and feed a bakery. This doesn't really make sense in any circumstance. But yeah, techs, tech and upgrades will likely make the bakery the most reliable food source. Although if you look at the spread here, Cretonians are the only race that can probably afford to be producing like three different food sources. Next up is Dondorians. Dondorians like to eat mushrooms, bread, and fish, and they prefer cold climates. So if you are in a cold climate, then mushroom farms are uh, a pretty solid contender here. Uh, keep in mind, keep in mind that to get about 90% fertility, which is kind of our goal in this video, you're ideally going to want to build your mushroom farms in mountains. To get maxed out fertility, you're gonna need to build them in mountains near a source of fresh water. Here you have an example of a mushroom farm that has 93% fertility. You get a base of 80% for building it in mountains and then you need to bring in more fresh water to get more fertility. So just keep in mind that that's a bit of a caveat with the, the mushroom farm. So unless you have a good spot to build a mushroom farm, bakeries are probably going to be the easiest bet as Dondorians. Keep in mind this includes farming the grain. So even if you're using Dondorians to farm the grain, you're almost as good as the mushroom farms. And as we mentioned with Cretonians, if you get the metal upgrade tech for bakeries, they're going to be the clear winner. Probably best to focus on bakeries for Dondorians. As for fish, even with the cold climate bonus, uh, the rate of production here we're getting is not great. However, if you have access to a little bit of furniture and a little bit of fabric, you can upgrade a fishery for a 50% boost, and you don't need any technology to do this. You could also put some science into maybe 30, 40, 50% into fishery methods here. It would, wouldn't cost you that much to get a 100% boost to fisheries. So if you're not upgrading the bakery and you don't have a good location for, say, a mushroom, farm a little bit of technology and research will make fisheries a decent option overall though bakeries are the clear winner next up garthemes garthemes are uh not very good at making food so garthemes like meat and fish unfortunately garthemes do not like living in cold climates so you're not going to get the cold climate bonus from fish baltic crawlers are stronger at the start of the game although if you get the technology and upgrade the fisheries like i showed you for the dondorians then fisheries are are actually going to probably be the clear winner here because if we're able to say almost double this we're going to be getting about three units per worker so if you have access to deep sea fisheries uh and, and upgrades then this is probably the winner actually garthemes do like meat but uh never use garthemes to farm entelodonts uh you can see here that uh it would take 160 percent of your population to feed your population so that is a complete waste of labor so next up humans for humans it's pretty simple in almost every any circumstance you're going to want to be using bakeries humans are good at science so they're going to get Get the metal upgrade really quickly uh, if they're able to get like an upgraded coal mine then you could also use use a coal-fired bakery that's up to you uh, if we look down at the other food sources uh, i would i would not bother doing intelligence as humans so meat and mushrooms for humans are going to be really really a luxury you might consider doing mushrooms in a unless you're in a cold climate humans don't like cold climates but if you are playing humans in a cold climate then you could have a more varied potentially have a more varied food supply one thing to keep in mind is that um, when you have nurseries as humans they require fruit probably best to produce that fruit with orchards same goes for any of the other races that feed their young fruit but overall humans are pretty well well, well rounded uh, i would not recommend doing baltic crawlers with them and globden humans do like to eat eggs i can't really recommend mushrooms uh or or eggs certainly not as a main food source these are absolutely luxuries so either get someone else to make it for you or import it or but don't don't be don't be putting a huge part of your population on uh, like globden pastures it's 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 just not labor efficient Amoebia. Amoebia are also uh, troublesome to feed. Amoebia like fruits, 
fish and eggs. I've seen a lot of people play do Amevia runs running fisheries. So it's not a bad strategy overall. If you look at the rates here, I would not use fisheries unless you have upgraded them. At the very least, giving them the upgrade that requires furniture and fabric. If not, orchards are better. Probably worth doing a combination of the two. Uh, Glob didn't come in a close third though. Uh, but again, once you've upgraded the fisheries, I don't really see expanding uh, Globdins as a uh, good strategy for Amevias. You're probably going to be using upgraded fisheries, maybe a little bit of orchards, and then you might want to substitute this with Globdins if you have free labor, but I don't I don't really see it as a priority. It's more of a luxury. Now let's look at Tilapies. Tilapies are actually pretty excellent at feeding themselves. Orchards are your best bet, for sure. Uh, Intelodonts are a very strong option. Tilapies are just about the best race at producing meat. And you might actually want to just run with Intelodonts from the beginning. If you look at the difference between orchards and Intelodonts, it's probably not worth the risk of disease. The thing is, you can have disease affect your livestock, but as long as you keep a bit of a stockpile of livestock and you don't like sell it all, you should be able to replenish your pastures if you do get hit by a wave of disease. Orchards, not so much. Uh, fruit farms are not a good option, and as usual, Globden are not a very good option. Uh, this is really a luxury. Do not try and make meat from Baltic crawlers with tilapies. It is basically the least efficient food source there is. So I've pretty much provided the answer to which is the best food source for the early to mid game. Obviously, at a certain point, you may start buying your food instead of producing it locally. Keep in mind that if you are rel reliant on buying food, if an enemy cuts you off from trade, you can starve. Or if you are under siege, you can also starve. So it's probably best to develop a local food source. And I've given you some very good tips on which one to choose. If you're interested in more kind of number crunching songs of six games, I'm thinking I might want to do one on what's the most efficient way to develop your textile industry. I might also want to look at which goods are the best to sell. Let me know if you're interested in that kind of thing. Leave a comment, hit the like button, and I'll be back soon with more Songs of Six content. Thanks for watching.